In a career that has spanned more than three decades and includes 50 number one hits, our guest today is one of the most awarded artists in Christian music history. On today's podcast, we welcome singer, songwriter, and music legend Stephen Curtis Chapman. He has a new tour and album, and he's next on the GEB America podcast. We are so glad and pleased to have Stephen Curtis Chapman join us today on the GEB America podcast, all the way from Franklin, Tennessee. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everybody. Good to be talking to you. Starting the year off with a little bit, little bit brisk, but uh, nonetheless, definitely warm inside and warm in uh, our hearts. We take time to be able to do this uh, with, with you. So thank you for taking time out of your day to join us. Let me jump right in. First question here. Give us a picture. Take us back to how it all began for you. Like, What, what would the, the journey of music, the journey mm-hmm. of following Jesus, like, what does that look like for you and your, your story? Yeah. Little Stevie Chapman, uh, born in uh, Paducah, Kentucky, uh, Western Kentucky, um, halfway between Possum Trot and Monkey's Eyebrow, if you look for it on the map. And I'm not even making that up. Uh, <laughs> okay. Two cities on either side. So that's where you find us. And, um, and, and grew up in a musical family. My dad had a real dream of being a professional musician, uh, folk and bluegrass music, country music, and all of that was really the music I grew up hearing first as a little boy. Uh, my dad's dream was to someday be on the Grand Ole Opry, uh, cause that's what he loved and listened to. And so that music got into my, my bloodstream very early before I probably even could talk. I was hearing music played in my home and my dad and his buddies would get together and play music and and he played in a little folk bluegrass group uh on the weekends and i'd go watch him and uh so those are some of my earliest memories when i was about six years old um my life really my family's life really was transformed by the gospel and by uh, my dad and mom really committing their lives to following jesus um which made a just a real radical transformation in my home both had grown up in the church and then just kind of that was not a a part of their life going forward really as they became adults until uh uh, revival came through our little hometown and our little church and um my dad who had grown up without a father uh sadly unfortunately my dad's dad my grandfather on my dad's side was alcoholic and destroyed his life and his relationship with his family left home when my dad was three died when my dad was about nine uh, and so he never had a relationship with him and never had really a father figure as a result because my, my grandmother never remarried and just raised my dad and his brother alone. So when Jesus came into the center of their lives and his life really was a, a transformational thing. His dream of chasing the music and trying to make it in music, <clears throat> meaning probably that he would have to leave his family uh, for the better part of their life and go chase this dream. He laid that dream down to really be at home and be with us, uh, you know, in church on Sunday and music then became a central part of our family and our life. And we sang together. My dad owned and still does own a little music store in Paducah called Chapman music, where he teaches guitar lessons at now at 84 years old, still five days a week. Um, and so, so that was the, the environment I grew up in learning, you know, my first song on the guitar was, uh, Johnny Cash Folsom prison blues. Uh, yeah. so, you know, I'm learning prison songs and then <laughs> my next song probably was he touched me by Bill Gaither. Uh, you know, so, you know, you got a little of all of it going on in the, in the home I grew up in because my dad, you know, loved music, played music, taught music. So he was teaching all kinds of music, which would be part of why I would know songs from, you know, gospel to rock and roll to, you know, the, the Eagles and the Doobie brothers and, you know, all the great songwriters of, you know, the, the James Taylor's, Jim Croce, John Denver, uh, you know, all those kind of songs. And, um, so all that kind of was getting mixed around in my life and my heart and, but singing in, in church together as a family growing up at, with that experience, my brother and I started singing together, graduated from high school and went to work at a place in Nashville called Opryland, USA, which was an amusement park that used to be here, uh, is no longer. But at the time, it was a great, especially the live music shows. They were really good and a great opportunity to kind of get, you know, get in the in the Nashville music world. Um, 
And uh, I sang on the Grand Ole Opry when I was 19 years old, which needless to say was a big deal to my dad with his dream. I got invited yeah. as a performer in the park to come be yeah. uh, a guest performer on the Grand Ole Opry one day as a kid. And uh, so, you know, that that started to open doors for me. And, uh, and I started writing songs in high school. That was really kind of how I found my voice. My brother was the better singer, really. And my dad is a great singer. I didn't grow up really as a singer in the home they were the singers i was a real focused on my guitar playing and 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 then i started writing songs and uh incidentally while i was there at opryland some songs of mine fell into the hands of none other than bill gaither the guy who wrote the songs mm -hmm. i grew up singing with my family mm -hmm. uh through a just an acquaintance that found out i was a songwriter took some songs of mine on a little cassette tape played them for his good friend bill gaither uh, up in Indiana. And that all led to me ending up with my first publishing deal and moving to Indiana to Anderson College to study music there under Bill and Gloria Gaither's kind of mentorship. And um, uh, that, of course, began to open a lot of doors for me, particularly as a songwriter. And uh, then 1987, got to make my first album um, and uh, right. for Sparrow Records. And mm -hmm. uh, I guess, as they would say, maybe the rest is uh, history in the making still, because thankfully somehow it's still, it's still, uh, the story is still being written. Yeah. Yes. Well, and I think that's something that I, you know, in having you on, I, I of course grew up kind of, you know, we talk about in Southern Ohio, kind of grew up hearing all the bluegrass. My dad was a big Johnny Cash fan and all that. And so oh, when I started yeah. listening to your music, uh, back in the late eighties, I remember thinking, wow, I can hear the influences. Uh, and I think that's what kind of drew me to, to liking your style and liking your, mm. uh, your songwriting. And, um, incidentally, I was telling Steven, uh, my first CD I ever owned, my mom bought me more to this life. That was the first CD. No way. Oh, yeah, wow. very first that's one. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, I think That's the second incredible. one was Striper, but, you know, I mean, that, it is. Hey, hey. You started out writing and then just went up from there. Yeah, you know, it's just like variety, right? You got to have diversity in your That's music. Right. That's right. And I think that uh, I wanted to ask you about the, how do you maintain that consistency, you know, from from those first songs to, like, you, you just released here recently the new album still, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but uh, the consistently consistency to be able to really just churn out song after song that people love people embrace and that are are these hits you know now what 50 number one yeah. hits uh within that uh that's Maybe. remarkable yeah you know it really is uh amazing to me i mean nobody's more amazed by that than i am more nobody's more grateful uh and and i am more aware you know than anybody of the reality of that doesn't happen in in a vacuum or just because of what I do, it happens because I've had amazing people around me support, you know, from family and, and pastors and mentors and people pouring into me, you know, just, uh, spiritually, uh, even living and not living anymore. You know, the writings of C.S. Lewis and A.W. Tozer and Dietrich Bonhoeffer and, you know, the list goes on and on. And, and those that have inspired me and then turns into song and the great songwriters from, you know, the Christian, you know, songwriters and, and guys that inspired me, Dallas Holm, if you remember that name from many years ago, mm -hmm. who is mm -hmm. still a, a dear friend, his wife, actually, Linda, just passed away a few weeks ago, and um, sadly, and, and just heard from him recently, but um, but then, you know, songwriters to the Jimmy Webbs of the world, who wrote those great songs for Glenn Campbell that inspired me so much, you know, when I was a kid, like that's storytelling at its best, you know, you paint a picture and as a listener, you're there, you know, you're, you're sitting there, you know, uh, with that, yeah. with that singer experiencing what they're telling you about those kind of songs really impacted me when I was a kid. And so those are the songs I think that I aspired to, to write and create. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and then, you know, I think staying, trying to stay a student of music, you know, just still listening, still being inspired, still finding music that inspires me. Um, you know, that, that I, uh, that makes me want to, you know, write new songs. Um, you know, there, uh, music for me, songwriting has just always been the way I process life. Uh, I kind of work out what's going on in my world, uh, mm -hmm. personally, you know, my marriage, my family, um, what's going on in the world around me. 
and and uh the way i process that is is just really through a song and so i feel like as long as i'm breathing you know talk about at this point in my life you know all these artists that are doing the farewell tours you know i see a lot of those and and i'm like you know it's hard to imagine ever a day when i put my guitar in the case the last time and go well yeah i think i'm you know i'm done i'm i'm done writing songs you know i'm thankful that that you know pressure and that expectation and gosh you got to churn out another record and you know the record labels they're waiting and you know the next thing the next thing that that is you know that that has died down and and slowed down thankfully and and but as is evidenced in this still record you know the song the very title of that album still is uh as i say in the song i'm still i still want to sing you know about the grace of god the love of god it's still as amazing and you know uh, uh and transformational in my life and i see the impact of that now in different ways and i've lived through a lot i've lived through a lot of heartache hard things sad things um and and yet that makes the gospel and and the hope that i get to sing about even more important and more true uh and that inspires new songs and so yeah i think that's the process that that goes on uh, that keeps inspiring me to want to create new music yeah so i was curious what um what project would you say was maybe either the hardest or maybe that you grew the most from that you could think back across mm-hmm. these several projects you've had? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, the hardest one uh, in, in many ways to, you know, to create just because of where it came from, even though it wasn't uh, that difficult, you know, uh, to, you know, to, to write the songs because um, they just kind of came out of me and I wasn't even making a record. Honestly, I was just trying to, uh, pour my heart out and, and grapple and wrestle with, you know, the, the very, uh, difficult loss of our youngest daughter, Maria, uh, 15 years ago was an album called beauty will rise, which were songs that I would say were kind of my Psalms and laments during that time. And, um, and so, you know, like I say that they, once I gave myself sort of permission to just pour that out, the questions, the, 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 you know, the doubts, the struggles, the wrestling, uh, all of that. Um, it, it was, they, they kind of came out of me. Uh, I didn't struggle with those songs as much as I wrestled with the realities that mm-hmm. created the song. Um, Certainly. and, uh, and so that, you know, that was, uh, one that I, I think often, and even when I record, I thought, I don't know if this is even an album. I don't even know that people are going to, they're not going to want to, this is not an album. Hey, let's listen to the new Stephen Chris Chapman record. You know, uh, it's, it's heavy. It's really, it's, but I've had so many people that have said of all of your music, when I needed it, that album, I felt like here is a friend, just like when you read the scripture and you read, you know, uh, you know, Job and you, you know, this is coming from the heart of someone suffering and, and wrestling and grappling with, god and his goodness and his his perfect will and yet what does that mean and how do i how how, would i do with that you know you you know this this guy's not he's writing from a place of deep uh of his own deep struggle and uh or or you know king you know psalms so many of the psalms how long oh lord are you going to forget me forever you know those kind of things that have become so precious to me and Mm -hmm. so important in my life to uh, have that so i felt like that was you know, uh, one that I really was thankful that I got to share, uh, with people, you know, in that way. Um, anyway, that's one that yeah, comes thank to Thank you. I was just to say, I was wondering with kind of, as you wrestled with that and walked through that, that made me think of, of maybe a little more of an understanding of what David might, might have gone through as he was writing through and pouring his heart out in the, in the, in the scriptures, you know, cause he was singing songs and it's like, like you said, like mm-hmm. how long and, does that yeah. any of those kind of things kind of come for you? Oh, absolutely. The Psalms, I mean, I've said it many times, the Psalms became so much more, I think I, I it's weird to say, but I, it was like for the first time in my life, I really kind of got the Psalms. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think I, I would read how long, Oh Lord, you're going to forgive me forever. And then, but your love is better than life in the same chapter, you know, in the same mm-hmm. like yeah. passage, you know, you see, you see this like schizophrenic really kind of thing going on in David. And all of a sudden I was like, yeah, I totally get that because I feel that like, God, you've forgotten me. I don't even know if you, if I'm anywhere on your radar, if you even know I exist, I don't know if you exist. I'm, I'm in this dark place. Mm-hmm. And then, but you know, but here's what I'm going to choose 
to anchor my heart to, you know, yes. God, you're, you're faithful. You're good. Um, yes. I don't get it. I don't understand. Or, or Job, though, you, even if he slays me, I'm going to trust him. Cause yeah. and at the end of it, it's kind of like the song, you know, the, the, the disciples, when Jesus says, you know, everybody's leaving, peeling off. Cause I'm talking about cross and death and, and all the people that are following him start kind of peeling away. And he's like, mm-hmm. he looks at his disciples, y'all going to leave me too. And, you know, there's that great moment when they say, where else are we going to go? You know, you have, you, you have life, you are life as we see it and understand it. So we got nowhere else to go, nowhere better for sure. Uh, even though we don't understand it, we don't get it, but you know, this is where, this is where hope is, this is where life yeah. is. And so, uh, yeah, I, I think that's, you know, I, I definitely, the Psalms became so much more important, which is why I would then do an album that I would honestly say probably was one of the hardest ones for me to write only because it was out of the element of what I typically do as a songwriter mm-hmm. was the an album called Worship and Believe, um, where I really felt because the Psalms and those declaration kind of songs that are not typically what I write of just, you know, re singing scripture. Mm-hmm. You know, I usually I'll infuse that into a bridge or something, but a lot of my songs are right. story, story songs are mm-hmm. more conversational. And then here's a scripture sort of, you know, that's tethered to it to say, here's, here's what God's word says about that. You know, I've done that a lot, but to really write songs like the heavens declare your glory, the skies, you know, those kinds of songs, but those had become important to me in a different way. Songs like blessed be your name. You give, Mm -hmm. you take away my heart will choose to say, you know, that that I I wanted, I started feeling myself inspired to write some of those. And so Mm -hmm. I wrote the, the album, that, that I called Worship and Believe, but that was really different for me. And I wrote with Chris Tomlin and Matt Marr and Matt mm-hmm. Redmond and some of my friends, you know, for those kind of songs. It's not in my, you know, standard kind of lane, but yeah. I felt really compelled to, to do that. So. so in the albums that have come since then, do, have you have you seen uh, it, within your own mind and heart like a shift that, like if you, because of that, that particular dark time in the album and kind of what, you know, came out of that, did it cause you to maybe shift your yourself a little bit for the, you know, for the next more, what we would call your lane kind of albums? Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, you know, I, I think internally, yeah, there, there is maybe a, a shift or just a, 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 even a kind of a deeper place that those songs come from, not because they were not coming from the deepest place I knew, but you know, when you, uh, you know, if you're, if you're a diver and you say, yeah, I've been down, you know, I've been down pretty deep, you know, and mm-hmm. my experience takes me to, you know, whatever, you know, 50, 50, 60 feet below sea level. It's pretty dark down there. But then suddenly you do a very, very deep dive and you see things and experience things down at, you know, 120 feet or what, I don't know how deep people dive, but you know, you get down there where it's really dark and really scary. And, um, you know, or you're walking on a journey. It's like, yeah, I've been to some valleys, but suddenly you go to the to Death Valley and you go to the darkest, deepest places that you never imagined. And your experience, you're gonna you're gonna have an experience there to draw from when you talk about, yeah, I know what it's like to really, uh, you know, hurt. And here's my experience. So when I write a song like "Don't Lose Heart," you know, for example, from the Still record, or even songs like "Still," you know, I'm gonna sing about the one who's given life to me. You know, and people have even said, you know, hearing you sing that, you know, a lot of people could sing a song like Don't Lose Heart and really mean it and sing it with great, mm-hmm. you know, passion and, and intensity and and, uh, and and purpose. But people have said, knowing your journey and where you walked, when you say that to me, it's different because it's like a friend who I can say, yeah, I know wow. what they walked through. And when they yeah. say Don't Lose Heart, because I've been there, I've been with I'm with you. We're going to make mm-hmm. it. We're going to make it, you know, that's a different thing. And that's part of what has really con- in, in, inspired me, kind of compelled me to want to keep writing these songs, yeah. even though, you know, cause I wrestle as any songwriter would, you know, there's a point where I think I've done so many songs, so many albums. It, it, does the world need another Stephen Curtis Chapman album, another Stephen Curtis Chapman song? You know, there's a lot of them out there and people will even say, man, I love the great adventure. I love, I will be here. I love Cinderella. You're never going to, never going to be a better song than fill in the blank. And that as a creative, <laughs> yeah. you kind of go, well, then do I need to write any, isn't that their way of saying, you know, if we yeah. want new songs, we're going to listen for a new voice, a new artist. And, mm-hmm. 
And yet, I think there's something at the same time in that to say, you know, whether it's number one or number, you know, 101, it, it, that is kind of not the point, but just to be faithful to share where I'm at now. Uh, and I, I've heard, you know, a lot of people say I'm really thankful because that's where I am. You know, life has gotten harder than I ever imagined. I didn't expect mm-hmm. it to go this dark and get this hard. But thank you for singing those songs, uh, you know, from that place, too. Well, we still, um, you know, we did need another album. So, and it was still, and it's, and, and I got to tell you, even before I had um, talked with Stephen about uh, my co-host about having uh, you on the podcast, I listened to the album because I, you know, I was, I really wanted to, okay, take off my, uh, take off my podcasting GM TV network kind of thought process and looking into this from like, oh, marketability and all that, just listen. Right. And, yeah. and, uh, and I love, I really, really have loved it. And, um, I will say this though, you talk about those number one songs. So my, when my daughter got married, um, she was gonna have a dance and mm-hmm. she said, do you want, um, you gotta have a song. And I said, well, it won't be Cinderella. I'm not crying. <laughs> not well, it was that. not your song. Sorry. <laughs> it's I said, okay. Nope, hey, I nope, get it. nope. Can't do it. <laughs> I got to do it. Cinderella no, or Butterfly here. Kisses, those two. Oh, no, yeah, I know. exactly. <laughs> Can't do that one either. Yeah. Uh, Bob Carlisle, no, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've got my daughter is eleven, and I've already. She's like, yeah. In four years, I'll be driving. I'm like, stop. Don't. We're, no, you're not driving yeah, yet. Yeah. It reminds dads. Our dads is we jump to that that moment, right? You're like, mm-hmm. you know, all of a sudden Cinderella, they were like dancing. And I'm like, stop. I can't even think about it yeah. too much. Uh, yeah. Anyway. So I, I gotta say, I joined probably the, the jur- your journey of songs, I think back in the, for sake of the call and, mm. you know, the great adventure, definitely some m- good memories, of the early nineties there of that one. Um, but tell us a little bit more about how this, this, uh, this album, you, you mentioned a little bit, alluded to it already, but yeah. just tell us about the album still and this tour kind of, what does that mean for you? What's, what's that been, yeah. what's it been for you? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, as I said earlier, I process life and the world and what's going on around me with music and songs. And honestly, if you'd asked me four years ago, are you going to make another album, a full album? I would have said, I'm not really sure because music's changed so much. The consumption of music, you know, the days of album, you know, and you go buy the record or you buy the CD or you buy the cassette and listen to the whole thing. That's all changed. And now people make songs and eventually maybe an EP. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe eventually there's enough, they have a 12 song or, 30 song album if you're right. Morgan Wallen or whatever you know mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and so it's just all different the game you know the, the rules have changed and so I I would have said I don't really know if if I'll write you know a, that many songs around the theme and the way I've always thought about albums because it's just people listen to music differently they listen for songs and not take that journey necessarily that I love to create with an album um, but as I was living through the pandemic uh, with the rest of the world and so many things that were happening in the world were unprecedented things that I'd never mm-hmm. experienced. And then I'm, then I lost, you know, a friend, very dear friend who played keyboards with me for years and years, Brian Green, uh, lost a brother-in-law, my wife's, uh, sister's husband, who we walked mm-hmm. through his, uh, brain cancer mm-hmm. and very quick five, six month journey, uh, of him being diagnosed to him passing away at 62 mm-hmm. years old and just, a, a re, you know, relating a lot to, to that journey. That's where the song, uh, love now came from. That's where the song kindness came from at his, at his funeral. So many people getting up and just talking about, he was kind, he was, mm-hmm. a you know, worked at the gas company in Springfield, Ohio, and, uh, not a name uh, or, or a life that you would have ever read about in the, in a book or a, you know, newspaper article, but just a, uh, just salt of the earth guy. But just walking through that journey with him, it, it impacted me so much. Um, and then looking at what was going on in the world and seeing so much conflict and so much, you know, more of just division than we've ever experienced in our world politically and racially and everything. And all that stuff started to just, I, well, I, I, have, I have songs coming out of me around those themes or songs I want to write. And so I started, you know, just writing these songs and, um, and thought, well, I want to share these, you know, uh, I want to share them with my friends. And again, kind of push aside all the voices of, well, is it, you know, is it relevant? Is it current? Is it cool? Is it all the things? And it's just, this is just my heart and tell the stories that I feel like, you know, I'm living in right now. 
Uh, and ultimately, you know, the, the title and the whole idea of the word still was that, you know, I just still really am compelled to do this. I, I think it still is important and matters and is worthwhile sharing uh, these thoughts and these songs to encourage people uh, in their own journey. Because a lot of people are right where I am. They've been on this journey for a long time. Uh, you know, they're, but they're struggling with new realities that we've never wrestled with before. Mm-hmm. Faith, church, you know, uh, pandemic, you know, communities are going away, can't be together, can't meet together. What does that look like? The loneliness of that, the isolation, you know, all those things that kind of created these songs and, and really just the joy. I mean, I, truth is I love making music and back to the concert at hand and, uh, kind of returning around to that, you know, People have asked me, you know, you, are you, is that just kind of something that you're sort of continue to do? Are you tired? Are you weary? Or is it, is it still exciting? And I really can say, honestly, I've never enjoyed playing music um, more than I do now. I I think Mm -hmm. partly because that pressure of so many years of, Hey, that was really great. You won a Grammy. Now the next one, let's go for two Grammys or, you know, that was a <laughs> old album. Let's go for platinum. Let's, you know, yeah. there's the pressure that comes with it. Just norm natural in the business world and the record labels and all those expectations. And, um, and to be at a place now where, you know, so much of that is not weighing on me to just say, man, these, these songs have connected with people's lives for many years. And when I sing those songs now and I get to see people in the audience with the smiles or the tears in their eyes and thinking, man, we got married to that song. Yeah, we did dance, you know, uh, mm-hmm. to, you know, with our daughter and, and cried through, you know, Cinderella or, you know, we saddled up our horses, you know, as a family on our summer vacation or our, you know, youth group, you know, mm-hmm. uh, camp, you know, uh, summer camp, you know, that was our theme song. We were diving in and, you know, and you can sort of see the memories. And then what I always love to say is that, you know, what I love most about the music I play is that I get to remember not just where we've been, but where we're going. And I get to remind people of that, encourage people of that. And I've never needed that more now uh, than than I do now. And I don't think any of us have ever needed to be keep remembering where it is we're going. The story is not over yet, you know. Um, So, yeah. So that's what I love about getting to do getting to still do these songs and play them live and get to have great musicians. I got some guys touring with me on this tour that are incredible world-class musicians. And I love getting exposed people to that too, to just go, man, this is great music being performed really, you know, great world-class by these great, mm-hmm. great musicians. And, you know, that's, that's a fun thing to get to get to be a part of. Go to Stephen Curtis Chapman.com in the notes of the show for our listeners. There's a link there and you can go through and you can click on tour and you can see everywhere that he's going to be here this spring. And I know they're adding more tour dates probably by the time this is, uh, this is live and this episode drops, there'll be even more that are added and uh, be sure and go out and uh, enjoy a night of music uh, with Stephen Curtis Chapman. Uh, I wanted to ask you one last thing is for our listeners, a little behind the curtain, peering behind the curtain with Stephen Curtis Chapman and family. What What's something that you all enjoy doing that maybe most people don't know? Something that's a family event or hobby, tradition? Yeah. Um, wow. Going to uh, La Hacienda for a Mexican meal is uh, one of our favorite things to do. Hey, let's hit La Ha, 530 tonight. You know, all the grandkids <laughs> come, everybody gathers oh, around. Awesome. Now it's 17 of us around a big table. Uh, several tables pulled together and just having a nice <laughs> catch up with everybody. Yes. Um, uh, well, you know, we, we just got back from a trip to uh, Disney actually over Christmas. Uh, several years I've had the opportunity to do, uh, be a part of something there called Candlelight Processional, where I get to read the Christmas story oh, actually yes. straight from scripture. And there's a big Love choir it. and an orchestra, and th- they do That's this great. every year from New from Thanksgiving to New Year's. And so I've done that off and on for the last 20 years. So my kids have grown up. Now my grandkids are growing up, you know, somewhere around the Christmas time of us going and spending two or three days at, at Disney World as a family, uh, hearing the Christmas story, me narrating it, being a part of it. But then, of course, playing at Disney, which, you know, is always fun. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, that's one of our family traditions. But um, just anything we can do together. We love being together. And, in fact, I'm sure today I'll end up bundled up out in the snow with my grandkids probably so you've got seven now right yes yeah so, uh, so how's that 
you know i oh, mean what it, has that it, how has that changed you it's it's awesome i mean it's amazing and i still can't believe it uh you know that my kids have kids and even one of them my granddaughter that's 12 almost 13 years old like i mean she's still got a, few, a ways to go but she's 12 years old getting yeah. ready to be a teenager i'm like how yeah. is that even possible <laughs> so uh so i'm just trying to take in the moments you know that i have because it's going so much faster now than it did yeah. when my kids were growing up even isn't that the truth <laughs> and with technology yeah. and everything it's just go 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 oh, i know yeah yeah well uh well, I want to, on behalf of everybody listening here to the GB America podcast, I want to thank you for coming on and joining us. We really wanted to have you on before you really got going with the tour because we knew things would get busy, but we wanted to give people opportunity to hear from you and hear about the album and uh, have the opportunity to find you in their neck of the woods uh, on this uh, great spring tour that you've got. And uh, wow, we are, we are, we are very cognizant of how busy that you can be. And I know that you, you said you need to, um, bundle up and get out with the grandkids today and we don't want to <laughs> yeah. we don't want to uh, delay that but uh, would you mind um in the time we have left would you mind just praying for our audience maybe there's someone <laughs> listening that this has spoken to them or they've been listening um and they've gone through maybe something here recently maybe the holidays were far from what they wanted it to be just maybe a, a prayer for them a prayer for of encouragement sure absolutely well father thank you so much for uh an opportunity to uh, visit with my brothers here and um, Lord, just the gift of uh, media and uh, podcasts and radio and technology that allows us to uh, speak these words that will go into places that uh, or only you could direct them into, to the hearts of somebody uh, right now who is really desperate uh, to just, be reminded from someone uh, who has walked in some really desperate, hard places that uh, you are good and you are faithful. And otherwise I wouldn't be sitting there having this conversation with these guys. And you know, I don't uh, have the answers and have it all figured out, but I have seen, and we have the three of us guys have seen you uh, be faithful and true to your word and, so thank you for the opportunity to share that and pray that you would encourage those who are listening um, that may be really at a dark, dark place, God, that, that they would just be reminded that you are with them, that you are with us, God with us, as we celebrated just recently with Christmas and the reminder that you uh, came and you still come, and you're still here, and you're still with us, and you are for us. And uh, we thank you for that. And uh, thank you again for the opportunity to remember it together. And um, we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.